Good morning, folks. Joe here with Mr. Scooter. We've got the house to all to ourselves. I think today's a good day to go to the woods. Go do an overnighter. It's supposed to thunderstorm a little bit later, but uh, that just adds to the adventure. But first, before we head out, let's give a shout out to my sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Thank you very much, DollarShaveClub.com, for sponsoring this video. Dollar Shave Club is everywhere. You've seen it a lot. They've obviously got a good brand, good product, and a really cool company. So not only does it save you time and money by coming straight to your house, I actually prefer these blades to the more well-known stuff that you buy in the store. Just pop her off, replace the blade, and you got a shave butter with it as well. A non-foaming shave butter. It's fancy. You can just take your old razors, toss them right in the garbage. So when it comes time for me to shave my, you know, three to five hairs I get on each cheek, Every couple months, Dollar Shave Club is my go-to. Uh, I got this, too. You know what I mean? I can grow this little chin hair out or something. Got to trim it up every now and then for the wife. Stay pretty. But, um, yeah, ease of use. Come right to my door. Uh, and just a great product. If you guys want to check out Dollar Shave Club as well, they are offering something pretty cool for my viewers, for my um, subscribers. So if you sign up for a limited time, new members get the first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of the Dr. Carver Shave Butter for five bucks with free shipping. That's $15 value for five bucks. And after that, the razors are only a few dollars a month. This offer is only available at dollarshaveclub.com slash robinette. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash robinette. Link is in the description. Dollar Shave Club is a smarter choice to get a great shave at a great price delivered conveniently to your own home. Join the Dollar Shave Club and never buy blades in the store again. So the best thing, there's no commitment, no fees, you can cancel any single time you want. Let's get out to the bush now. I gotta get my bush clothes on, grab Mr. Scooter, got a nice big old steak, we're headed for the woods. Next time I see you, I'll be getting eaten by mosquitoes. <laughs> I got a brand new backpack by Frost River. This is the Frost River Cliff Jacobson pack. Cliff Jacobson is a an American canoeist. So uh, we're gonna do an overnighter, Scout and I, in the woods today, in the mosquito-filled woods. You guys have been saying you haven't seen Scout enough lately, and I agree. I haven't been taking him up, up, up. Bleh, haven't been taking him out enough lately, but um, yeah. It's buggy and hot and stuff, but today is, it's a little bit cooler. It's going to thunderstorm later on, so the, it's a little bit cooler in the air. My Reflectix, this is going to be my sleeping pad tonight, and I got a tarp for shelter. It's raining. It's been raining on and off ever since I got here. I've only been here for about a half an hour or so. Didn't walk in for too long. But uh, it's calling for th scattered thunderstorms all day. Uh, so I do want to get my tarp up, get some protection from the rain, mostly for my camera. I'm not, it's a, it's a hot day. I'm not too worried about the rain getting wet and stuff, but the, uh, can't get the camera wet, right? This guy, crazy doggy. I've already hung up. Oh, well, there's a bug up there, you can see. I've already hung up my uh, ridge line. Got to get that tarp up there now. This goat's found uh, something to do. I like to leave paracord attached to the tarp. That way, I'm not surprised without having any paracord when I get to the camp in case I don't pack extra but it does make for a difficult setup when the sticks are all getting caught in the, in the, in the uh, paracord but that's a quick fix no big deal so I am going to just tarp it again tonight I know on a couple trips ago I said that was it for this season because of the bugs but we're going to live dangerously live life on the edge a little bit a eh, scooter magooter So that looks pretty decent. I do want to make a tripod, a big old tripod, 
for a cooking platform. I'm going to cook a big old tomahawk steak for me and scout tonight. I'm going to smoke it. So that needs to go up a little bit higher because I'm going to have the fire underneath it. And I think if I get the tripod long enough, I can actually stick it in the middle and raise the whole tarp up. Uh, it'll be a double double use uh, tripod. So got to go get some uh, materials for that now. Love these fall raven pants. This axe sleeve or axe pocket works perfect. My little Gransfer's uh, outdoor axe, and I've got my silky saw gone boy ready to roll. All squared away. You coming, big guy? <laughs> All right. Just sprayed on some mosquito repellent as well, so hopefully steer clear of those guys as much as possible. Oh no. They're on me. They don't care. Just extra flavoring, you know? Yeah, this is perfect. It's dead. It's thin enough. It's not going to take a lot of work to cut through. Watch out, buddy. It's hung up. There we go. This is a uh, thing of basswood. What are you, stop, stop. What are you doing? Here, you take it. Go on. Bring it back to camp. Son of a gun. You got it? Go on. Get your stick and go. Come on, back to camp. Get your stick. Come on. Come on. Get your stick. Bring it. Keep going. Keep going. Get your stick. Get your stick, go. Get your stick and come. Get your stick and come. Come. Come on, Bree, you're almost there. <laughs> Good dog. Good dog. Good, get your stick and come. Here, watch out. Watch out, I'll cut it for you. Watch out, buddy. Back up. Back. There you go. All for you. What a good helper. No, this one's mine. <laughs> okay, so let's measure this on how tall it's going to be on the in the tarp. Okay, first I just want to make sure that there's no sharp parts at the top. It's not gonna cut my tarp at all. And do that just by almost chamfering at the ends and then taking a secondary bevel off. This actually, the secondary, um, this little thing here should go. Okay, that's pretty good. I feel pretty confident that that's soft enough. My tarp is durable too, but yeah, that's good enough. Okay. This is definitely not high enough for the kind of fire that I want to have for in order to cook my steak high above it. So it is a good idea to get this up higher. That's pretty good there. I got to remember it's not going to be straight like this. It's going to be on a tripod, so it is going to be angled a bit. I can probably afford to have maybe another two or three inch uh, height on this, but that's pretty decent. Pretty decent, yeah? All right, cool. So now we are off to find two more pieces. So I can gauge this, the length of the stick I need. I'm just gonna use my feet so I don't have to carry the stick around. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I go nine and a half-ish, I'll be safe. I got these two more substantial pieces. They're quite a bit thicker than the first one, but that's all right. Go lay down for a minute, buddy. You're all out of breath, all winded. Solid. Yeah, nice piece of firewood. Or not. Just a nice piece of scout wood. Go on. Sometimes you need your tripod to be able to support lots of weight. Scout, go lay down, buddy. And um, this isn't one of those times, but I'm going to tie it like it is. So what I like to do is just to start off with something underneath the three poles, right? As you can see there. It's a little bit 
better. Um, and I like just to attach the one paracord to the one piece of wood by a double overhand knot, nothing fancy, just so that I know it's on there. I'm going to wrap them a couple times together, not extremely tight because you do want it to spread, the legs to be able to spread a little bit when you open it. So two times around, and then I'm going to start, and those are called wraps, and then I'm going to start to do the fraps, which are in between, in between the pieces of wood, and you do want to go underneath it and above it. And this is just going to tie it all in really tightly together. Go on the next one. You guys hear scope panting? Skirt, skirt. <laughs> so, and then again. Oh, big old daddy long legs coming out of there. You can do it again if you want to. Then I'm just going to tie it off. A couple more around and tie it off together. When I tie it off, I put my hand to create some space. I'm gonna come up, tuck it under. I even, and you can even tie it off with a quick release if you wanted. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, so that's good. My only problem is now I have taken up most of my room where I'm going to sleep. So I think I'm going to have to move it over to one side. Probably move it over this side because the rope's not in the way. That's fine like that. I have my fire underneath there, cook, and then sleep right next to it right here. And Scout can be up the feet or my head or whatever. But uh, okay, cool, that works. Okay, so, super lightweight, this trip. This is my sleeping pad, my Reflectix. I've used it before in the winter in conjunction with sticks underneath and it kept me okay. Uh, it's not cold, it's not going to get cold. I don't need protection from the ground. It's just going to be a, a, a touch uncomfortable, but I can handle that for one night. And then also my sleeping bag is very lightweight. It's not a sleeping bag, it is a sleeping bag liner. This is the one I've been using for years inside my sleeping bag. It's just a polyester liner. It's all I'm going to need tonight. So my only bug protection is smoke from the fire and bug spray, which I've already put bug spray on. So that's my sleep system right there, guys. Super uh, minimalist. Scout's going to be right on the ground. Uh, normally I like to have something to buffer him from the ground, but again, it's not cold. So I'm sure actually he'll prefer the ground. Sometimes he digs a little hole and lays in that as well to stay cool. So. Hey, big guy. He's got that double coat, that double thick coat. It's just, he's, he's very, uh, very warm, I'm sure. Anyways, so that's my sleep system set up. Yeah. Maybe we go through what I have in my backpack now? It's just a little bit of stuff. We can do that. Yeah, you know what's in here, don't you? Go on, go lay down. All right, so. You've already seen what I've put up. I have my, my sill nylon tarp that I put up. I had some paracord with me. My Reflectix, my sleeping bag liner. Got my Grants for his outdoor axe. I like this little thing a lot. Fits nicely in the pack. I've got my, my grill. You guys have seen that a lot. As far as a knife, I've got my Turley gas grenade. Convex knife. I've got a fire steel in my pocket. So. Again, the Frost River Cliff Jacobson pack. First Frost River pack I've owned, only Frost River pack I've owned. Uh, this is the first time using it. It's pretty cool, I like it. It's uh, it's different than my normal style, you know what I mean? It's got leather 
leather buckle leather and buckles and stuff like that it's a little bit longer to get into but that's not such a big deal so right off the hop on the top I got my food I've got a two and a half pound tomahawk Angus tomahawk steak scouts gonna get some of that and so am I tonight people always ask me how do you keep your meat cool in the woods and stuff well, I freeze it the night before and then I let it thaw or I let it thaw the whole day uh, when I'm out in the woods here Stays fine. I wouldn't be keeping it for multiple days. I've got some steak spice and some garlic. I got a potato and some butter as well. So that's all that. I don't have any lunch, but that steak is going to be lunch and supper and maybe breakfast. Uh, I've got a possible pouch with my normal stuff in here: bug net, um, sunscreen, bug uh, bug spray, water drops, stuff like that. I've got one beer, a Canuck Pale Ale from Old Great Lakes Brewery. She's still cold, still cold, staying next to that frozen steak. Um, I've got a pair of just crappy cheap gloves to work around the fire. This is what my tarp was in. My glasses, a heavy cover frying pan. I'm going to fry up the potato with some leeks and garlic to go with my steak. I've got a 50 millimeter lens to go on my DSLR. Some extra paracord, batteries for my DSLR, and a bush chair if I decide to set it up. This, there's a front part as well, a little front sleeve, and in that I have a five by seven uh, mast tarp as well, just in case. Uh, along the back, this pack has no back support at all. Like it will completely fold it needs back support and it doesn't have a sleeve for it either but this is the backing for my seat for my canoe my, my pack boat and I'm planning on well I am going very soon on an extended long distance canoe trip and I have I just want to bring an extra back seat I've had them bend before after lots of use so I want to bring an extra back seat and that fits perfectly this is just PVC this fits perfectly in the backpack um, so and I will be bringing this backpack as a secondary bag so this this trip that we're gonna do is myself and Sean James uh, myself reliance it's going to be in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park we're gonna go for eight nights um, and we don't have to worry about single portaging because or single carrying because the portage is all relatively short um, so we're gonna have a two pack two backpack system this will be my secondary backpack my other ones gonna be my big rubberized red one that you've seen for uh, a lot so yeah so I really wanted to bring this backpack out and just test it out to see, see get a feel for it feel how much gear I can put into it and all that stuff but considering that this fits down the back of it and this is gonna go on my canoe my, on my canoe trip it's like a no-brainer to put it in the back there um, that's it for the for the main compartment oh no I do have a little lone woodsman uh, leather bearing block for Bodro in case I wanted to do that it's got a little um, bearing in there that does it for the outside or the inside of the pack. The outside only has has these oh there's the rain has these two large water bottle pockets, and I've got inside one I have two granola bars, my heavy cover canteen, the canteen cup, the lid, and the spork, and all in the one pocket. That's full of water. It's the only water I brought. I have to get the rest of the water from around here, and in the other pocket. I've got water filter, I've got a secondary tripod, I've got Scout's water bowl. So that's it, that's it for this backpack. No bells and whistles, just very simple. I kind of like it. So no sternum strap or belt strap either, so I have to keep the weight down low on it. That's my gear. I've got to tie some cross pieces on. I want to make sure that they are going to be long enough. Right there seems about a good height to keep up off the fire. So I'm going to tie these, this cross, these two sticks here first. Oh, pass. I have to tie these here. <clears throat> There's my plane, guys. There's my old plane. I'm just going to tie them together first off, again with an overhand knot just to keep them together. Then I'm going to probably lash them. 
that high. Probably just use this paracord. The fire is not going to get that high. Or the flames are not going to get that high, I mean. No, it's sturdy. Not going to go anywhere. I'll get some cross pieces to go across the top here. And uh, we'll be done. Just making up some shavings to ignite my fire with my fire steel. Because these bugs are getting bad. They're swarming me like crazy. The sun's come out too, so all the better. Alright, this is a pretty decent. I do want to make some fine curls though just to actually strike it on. Alright, keep these separate. So I've got my fine shavings there. put my twigs on right away too. They have lots of time to grow into a fire. Some of these are sassafras which have nice amounts of oils in them which will help to keep the bugs down. to pile all on at once, try and make some smoke like that, don't leave a lot of airflow kind of thing. There we go. Just for more smoke. Uh, just trying to get my head all full of smoke, that's where they keep getting me at, the mosquitoes, my hair. Uh, super hungry, just eating a bar, eating a bar, loving it. Smoke bath? This really does help, believe it or not. Helps quite a bit. I'm gonna try and go around and find some punky wood to put on top of here after. I do wanna let the fire grow and become a good sustainable fire before I do that though. It is sustained, just get, some, get a better bed of coals, I guess. Better bed of coals, get a better bed of coals. Better bed of coals. Go, good boy. Skeeters, man. Put on some bug spray again, I think. Out of frame. Out of frame, Joe. There's a good wire. He's such a good dog. Watch this. Oh, I'm fast. Who's a good daddy? Get some water, too. Good daddy. <laughs> I've always done things like that ever since he was a puppy, like when he was eating or playing with the toy or anything, I'd always make sure to go up with my face right into it and like even growl at him a little bit and stuff and he's never once shown any kind of like pushback or any kind of aggression or anything like that. And I've had him for, he's 10 this year, he's 10 in October and Emerald is 5. So half his life she's been around and he's been nothing but a good big brother to Emmy. 
right big guy she loves him you really, you love the emmy you love the emerald hey eh? yeah so you do he was actually scared of kids right off the hop um, we had him for maybe six months and then we came down we lived in Sault Ste. Marie I came home to Windsor and uh, brought him and my niece Destiny she was young at the time a couple years old and he was terrified that was the first time he'd been around kids really and he like hid behind me and barked and ran away and all this stuff and then now now they're best friends now he comes to the uh, the bus stop with me to get emerald and he's going up to every single kid right in their face licking them and stuff he loves the kids now he's a good boy 10 years old though a eh, scooter getting up there these flies, man. It's not even just mosquitoes, no, they're flies. I should have wore a hat, but I wanted to show off my fresh new haircut, you know? Pop my color. I'm sure he's happy to be out here. He's been cooped up for quite some time. I've been going on trips, and it's just been too hot and buggy, like now. <laughs> but every once in a while is okay, but he'd rather be out here and be hot and getting eaten by bugs and sitting inside the air conditioning on his couch and oh is that a tick that's a tick okay well tick removal on video I had not known that this was on him okay let's do this this is not new either it's been there for a bit he's got some poop and he's engorged a little bit all right let's go let's do this now, as I was just saying he hasn't been out in a little bit so this kind of tells me that he got it from the backyard um, Where'd it go? Son of a gun. Where'd she go, bud? See it? That's just a dog tick. Ideally, I would use tweezers, but I don't have them. What I'm gonna do is grab it by the face, as close down to the face as I can, and pull it sideways, not up. Sideways. Okay, I got him. Yes, that's your tick, bud. That's your tick. I just wanna make sure the sight it's not too bad. I'll put some rubbing alcohol on that when I get home. But let's show you guys this tick. So even though he's on medication for ticks, obviously he still gets a few. Um, what's good about this one is that I can see a piece of skin in his mouth. And that would be scout skin. Just trying to get this in focus for you guys. Um, and that tells me, okay, he spit the skin. It's next to him. And that tells me that I got the head and I got everything out with it, which is perfect. See, he's moving around, he's on his back right now. He's not fully engorged. When they're fully engorged, they look more like a lima bean. See him going? So he's definitely alive. We wanna kill this guy. This guy's going right in the fire. He's in my hand. There he is. See him? Goodbye, tick. Get down! Anyways, maybe I should give him a once over real good. Um, we were playing in the backyard quite a bit yesterday, but I did not believe that we had any in the backyard. Anyways, I'm not worried about it. It's a dog tick. I know what they look like. That's the only kind of ticks I've ever seen around here on myself, on the, on the, on the scooter, on my wife, or Emerald too. Um, yeah. Never had ticks here before like two years ago. I never saw a tick my whole life. And now they're rampant. What do you say, bud? You a little tick once over? Look at him. Hey, what do you think, buddy? What do you think, big guy? I've given him the once over. I don't feel anything. I just wanted to show you guys what I really do, why I didn't see that one originally. Normally, when we come out back from outside or whatever, normally from the woods, I'll look in his ears, right inside. Um, <laughs> on the on the not directly inside but like on the cusp of his ear uh, they like to go in there they like to go in places that are warm like under his armpits again it's maybe so that it's harder for them to get uh, knocked off as well I'm not really sure but under the armpits under the neck big time under here with dog ticks the worst thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna get super engorged to about to the size of a lima bean they get about white in color as well like a beige color and they just fall off and you find them on your floor arms up in the air flailing crawling around or whatever but um yeah it's no no harm no foul really with those dog ticks they're gross don't get me wrong they're disgusting um uh, my wife sure thinks so but not too harmful not yet anyway
Although I did hear, I think something, they're starting to carry different diseases too, more than just Lyme, so who knows, man. They're nasty little creatures either way. My fire's died down pretty good right now, so I'm gonna go search around for some punk wood to put on it and uh, get some more smoke. Wow, a little explosion. A little explosion from the punk wood. Ba bam, ba bam, son. That's a good amount of smoke, though, hey? Compared to what it was. That's just some old, danky, wet wood off the ground. Kind of punky, but uh, spongy, more or less. Smoke it nice and good. Nice and good. Wind's switching around a little bit. No bugs under here right now, though. <laughs> Oh, almost, almost did it, Raymier style. There we go. That's a nice sassafras. So. I keep noticing the wind is picking up and it is supposed to rain. Problem is that fire is not going straight up, the heat is not going completely up. So when I put my hand up where I put, would put the stake, oh piss, where I would put the stake, it's not getting much heat. So I think I'm gonna have to do a wind wind break or wind block, a tarp on this side, like a wall, to uh just make sure that the heat and the smoke goes up. I'll probably do that now. I am getting hungry and that steak's gonna take, I don't know, two, maybe three hours at that height. Scout's crying. What are you crying about, big dog? Huh? Steak. Steak. <laughs> I think he knows what steak means. This wind, man, is switching directions every two seconds here. Put this up here like this. Maybe bring it out a bit. I don't want to put it right close to the fire. Bring it out a bit. Oh, that was a close one, Joe. All right, I know what I'm gonna do. So we've already got the tarp tied onto the tripod there and pegged down. So what I want to do now is just kind of keep it away from the. Uh, Fire really right about there. Sharpen this stick already. The ground is relatively easy to pound into. That's there. So I just wrap this. Maybe do the same right here. Okay, even cooler, I think that if I just trim off a little bit more of this um, end of the stick that is my cross piece for grilling that's already attached to that, I can just hook the, the tarp tab right onto that. Let's try that. There we go. Not too shabby. All right, well now if the wind stops switching directions, we'll be all right. I actually probably have to lower it a bit. Should probably put it at about here. I decided to switch up my cooking setup. It was too high. It was like another foot and a half above where it is right now. And all I did it a little bit differently again. All I did was tie one, one piece on across and then these two cross pieces are loose on one side tied on this side that way they can move or whatever I need to do with the fire um, this is how I did it on my previous overnight bushcraft camp with the dog um, I did it back in what 
February or something like that. Anyways, um, yeah, this will work good. I'm gonna throw my steak on now and uh, continue feeding the fire. What? What is this? You gotta lay down, you're in the shot. Good boy. So this is my Angus tomahawk steak. Tomahawk steak basically is a rib bone-in ribeye, but I have to show you guys. This is no joke right here. No joke right there. She's decently thick. <laughs> Bigger than my thumb thick. It's a nice cut. Really nice cut. Scout, you gotta wait, buddy. You gotta wait a minute, okay? All right, so beforehand, I would I would cut off Scout's bone and leave his meat and everything beforehand, not even cook it and just have him eat it raw with no spices on it, but then that would kill the whole steak. It would kill the presentation. So I'll just not spice near the bone and just plan to cut off his piece off that. Because even the bone goes out here, he'll get the whole bone and then like this big. It's, it's a good amount of meat for Mr. Scouter. Spider going on my steak. Scout, you gotta stop licking it, dude. <laughs> You're jumping the gun, bud. Right about there. Where the heat is, the smoke is coming up. A oh, ba bam! What are you doing, big guy? That's gotta cook first. Alright, so now that the steak is actually on there, I don't want to be just cooking with sassafras and then damp, dank, uh, punk what I find on the ground. I want to use oak, I want to use maple. And I also want to use some hickory bark. There's a bunch of hickory bark hanging off a tree over here. I'm going to grab right now, throw it on the coals, get it smoking good, and then I'll go dra uh, grab some actual firewood. This is shag bark hickory. Let's see why it gets its name. This isn't hurting the tree at all. These are about to fall off anyway. So, grab a handful of these. Give some flavor into the old tomahawk. I've got my potato in here, cooking up a little bit. That should smoke pretty good there. Yeah, the wind is screwing me a bit, but I'm glad I'm able to adjust this pretty easy. All right, that's cooking behind me. You can see the fire. The wind is taking the flames and the smoke, and the wind keeps switching directions, so that tarp that I put up behind me is really not doing much, except for when the wind comes from that direction, which it's not right now. <laughs> but uh, while that's cooking, I might have to drop that down a little bit. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, let's go try to find some leeks. I'm pretty sure I could find some here. They're a little bit farther gone, so the, the leaves should be gone as well. But uh, I think I know where they are. We'll go try and find some. Perfect. How you can tell right now, this time of year, this is early June, uh, the leaves have fallen off. And they haven't started yet to get those oniony looking heads. There's like, it gets like a bulb with uh, almost like a flower on it. But you can tell these are leeks for sure. They're pushing their way up over the ground too. I don't even have to dig far for them. I did get a little digging stick. I'm only going to take a few. I'm going to grill some up with my, uh, or I'm going to fry some up with my potato. The digging stick failed. It should failed on me. There's one. Oh, what is this? Look at this red bug. Oh my goodness, you see that thing? Anyways, some worms in there, all sorts of fun stuff. There they go. That is a decent sized leak. Actually, they're probably perfect right now. Take just this little bunch of them, maybe four or five. Uh, 
This is the first flip, boys and girls. Oh, she's coming along. Slowly but surely, look at that. Oh, she's tender. She's so tender. Oh, my potato's getting cooked. A little, a little blackened. Blackened potato. I haven't been really adding too big of pieces. This is a pretty big piece here. Some bigger oak underneath, but trying to keep a higher flame. Hot bed of coals. I, I do think I have to drop this thing down, to be honest with you. Probably to right about there. You can't even see me. There I am. One, two, three. One, two. Even there. Even just out of frame right there. Nice and clean. That's fine like that. Sometimes they have like an outer sheath of like loose skin. You can kind of just peel up. And then get all muddy with your other hand. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. They're very good. Super organized pile of gear. So I used to do a whole lot with leaks. A couple years ago, I got all excited for them and I started to find them here. Um, yeah, I used to cook all sorts of stuff. You can make like a leek soup. Grill them up, fry them up, boil them, mash them, put them in a stew. You know. But this time, like I said, it's going to fry them up with my potatoes. What's taters, precious? That's backwards, eh? I'm a pretty backwards kind of guy. Have you guys noticed that? Can you tell? I think I need to sharpen my old turley. I don't know if I've actually ever sharpened this, just dropped the crap out of it. Yeah, buddy. Butterfly just flew by too. good those coals look. I cannot just let them go to waste. I'm definitely going to drop this thing. Alright, so I smartened up. I took that uh, that cordage off. Now I have a completely adjustable uh, piece. I'll show you what I mean here. Before I had these two pieces tied on here and they couldn't move them. Now I just have a fork stick, a long fork stick and I can drop it or raise it as much as I want to just depending. So I'm going to drop it on this end and uh, I'll have to fix it on the other end now. for the win. Man, it is hot. And standing next to that fire, I'm all sticky. So my potato, <laughs> I think it's turned into a baked potato, but that's all right, I'm still gonna cut it and uh, fry it up with my leeks. Just gonna get a little bit of the char off first. You can see it's basically done. Yeah, she's a mat she's a baked potato already. That's all right though. It'll probably mash up in the uh, frying pan a little bit. Yeah, she's a, she's already done. Darn it. I guess I could have eaten it as a baked potato. I should have, but I had this idea of uh, fried potatoes with leeks. Oh well. Mm, she done. I'm gonna use my heavy cover frying pan. This is titanium. When you're cooking with titanium, lots of butter and low heat. No scout, not for you, buddy. Lots of butter and low heat.
rake some of the coals away, some of the embers away from the rest of the fire. Cook it a little bit slower that way. What I'm gonna do is that I'm, I'm gonna finish it up right on the coals. I do wanna get like a, a burnt fat kind of thing going on, so clear the ash off the coals a bit. I'm just gonna slap this bad boy on there for a couple minutes, not even, a couple seconds on either side. And then I'll flip it onto the back so it can burn the uh, the fat. That's the there's a big band of fat underneath that. That's what I want to get all charred up. Ba bam! She's done. I'm gonna wait five minutes. We're gonna eat. I just got my uh, potatoes finishing up. Yeah, these are about done anyway. I want to throw a piece of sassafras on this fire right now to get the bugs back down. Oh snap, those are leeks. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Everything's done. I'm happy. I'm a happy boy. And I have a beer. And I have a beer. And I have a beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy, my good boy. I promised you. Hold on, wait. Wait, back up. Oh, oh my goodness. There you go, big guy. Look at that. Look at how perfect that's cooked. Okay, she's a little warm, dude. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How's that working out for you, Scooter? Good boy. All right, so first things first, I'll crack this beer because I'm super thirsty. Canuck Pale Ale from Great Lakes Brewery, 5.2%. One of my favorites from them. It's a staple. Cheers, guys. Ah, it's good about an IPA. You can drink it kind of warm. It's okay. All right, let's get into this thing. What do you think? Too rare? She's a bit on the rare side. I'm going to try a little bit. And if I think it's too rare, I'm going to throw it back on. But... It's looking pretty good. I just really want to eat this. <laughs> All right, there's my first bite right here. She's bloody. Mmm. It's a bit rare. A bit rare. Scott likes it. I gotta throw it back on for a little bit, I think. Yeah. Womp womp. <laughs> I was overzealous. Too much zeal. I'm gonna eat my potatoes and leeks while I'm waiting for my steak to finish cooking now. I got it right on the coals on top of the grill just to uh, finish it up a bit. This is good though. Very good. Ripped the fat off around the ribeye, and a bunch of this meat came with it. Super nice, tender. Mm, fancy. I'm gonna end up giving Scout a little bit more meat from the uh, the steak. There wasn't as much meat as I thought on that bone, but no worries. There's plenty enough for both of us. Mm. 
here's a trip. See the, the picture on the front? A little Canadian log roller dude. <clears throat> the back says, Canuck Pale Ale. It has been said that Canada is the only country in the world that knows how to live without an identity. This beer doesn't help much with that. From the fiercely irresponsible and stereotypical image on the front of the can to the distinctly American style beer inside it, we've really made a mess of things. What have we done? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> It was an ongoing joke when we were out on Vancouver Island. Wayne and I were the only Canadians out of the whole bunch, other than the Canadians who lived there, but out of the whole alone crew. And Chavez and Sam would always be like, sorry, sorry. We went to a, a grocery store one time, and myself and a, a lady who lived there around there, I, I assume, almost bumped into each other, and we were both like, oh, sorry, sorry. And Chavez and Sam just about died laughing. Ah, oh, that's funny. Funny to think about that. Overweighties. That was the name of the store. Overweighties. Oh! That burned. That burned quite a bit. Alright, we're gonna call this one done soon. Done, son? Okay, good boy. Drink it. Drink it up. Man, there's so many mosquitoes around him. Good boy. Should probably slow him up. Oh, there we go. Definitely done. Now she might be a touch overdone. <clears throat> Wish I had some salt. Sprinkle this on there. Cheers. Mm. On point. Mm. Good boy. Still holding on to that bone, are ya? No, oh, there's still a little bit on there, bud. You can pick that clean. Pick that clean, big guy. <laughs> you waiting for some more of the good stuff, are ya? I hear ya. I got the meat sweats. Uh, I can't eat anymore. I'm down to this much left. Uh. <laughs> it's a lot of meat. My hands are a little greasy. My knife blade is a little greasy. Good for it. Uh, Scout's gonna be lucky here. You want some more, buddy? Here. Only brought one beer. Why would I only bring one beer? Why would I bring only one? Why? Cheers. I'm a sad boy. Why would I do that? Man, I'm full. I gotta get this fire going again. Um, these bugs are all out. I don't even know if they're mosquitoes. There's these little gnat things coming out. These little little gnat things coming out. So, all around scouts paws. <laughs> ah! Bite me on the finger. Expensive meal for you there, Scooter Magoots. Here, lick the blood now. Lick the blood off. Lick the blood. Lick the blood. 
<laughs> Look it. All right, man. Meat coma time. You're being very noisy. I'm trying to sleep, bud. I don't need this anymore. I don't think it helped much at all. I think I'm going to lay my tarp down um, underneath my Reflectix. This has a little extra buffer. It's not necessary, but I'm not using it for anything else. It's not needed for wind block or anything. Uh, I don't even know if it's going to rain tonight. It was supposed to thunderstorm on and off all day, but that's not happening, obviously. So, lay this down. A little bit more buffer off the ground. Not that it's even needed or not that it really does much, but... I have a little bit more room now so my arms and legs can come off of this thing a little bit without being in the dirt. I've been laying here just taking it easy, using this as a pillow, my backpack and my little um, sleeping bag liner as a pillow. It is uh, like 7 o'clock. I don't really feel like doing much. But laying here is, is alright with me. It's Scooty Magooty too. The bugs aren't so bad at all. Uh, the mosquitoes have gone away. It's just these little gnat things flying around. They're not biting. They're just kind of hovering. So I will have to get some more firewood soon. I do want to have a fire tonight when it gets dark. I really am a fan of this little outdoor axe. It's nice and small. You can see how small it is compared to my hand. But she does, does a good job. The head is wedge, wedgy enough where she can split pretty good and then it's nimble enough to limb, stuff like that. I'm all out of water, so I gotta go get some. I'm gonna bring my water filter and my heavy cover canteen. And I guess I'll take Come. Scout too. Now I could just boil my water, but I'm already extremely warm, and I really, back up, I'll get you some in a minute here, I really don't want to drink hot water, back up buddy, I gotta get a bunch more here, I'll bring this back to camp and we'll divvy it up, just wait man, <laughs> I'll get you some, go drink from the creek buddy, He's already drinking from the creek a lot. Like, I can't do that, Scout, so. What did I find? Little skull. That's pretty cool. Raccoon or something like that, maybe? Pretty cleaned out. Well, there you are, some more. Scout the dog that doesn't think he's a dog. <laughs> Cheers. Nice and cold. 
well, what to do? What to do now, eh? What do you do when everything's done and there's still light? These summer days last so long. Where we're going with the caribou stays dark till or stays light out till like one or two in the morning. Residual light at least, so that should be interesting. Gets light nice and early too. Should be tons of bugs, tons of fishies. So looking forward to that. I have seen a few more ticks now. After I pulled that one off a of scope, I've seen one on my backpack and then one over on a tree over there. Both dog ticks again, no big deal, but I'm surprised. There's lots of ticks, man. We're not even in like the grassy area of the forest. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a weird one. Losing light real quick. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. Just gonna lay here with Scooter Magoots, head on in, check back with you guys in the morning. Good night. Just leave it. I, just, I woke up to him freaking chasing something. He was gone for a good five minutes, screaming for him and everything. Oh, you know, a little breath now. That was a, a long night. The bugs kind of subsided uh, midway through the night, which is great. They're coming out a little bit now with the sunlight, but it's just after six in the morning. Oh, yeah, this, uh, the sleeping pad, this Reflectix is not a good sleeping pad. I wasn't cold at all, but my hips and my freaking joints and bones are a little sore. But that's uh, it's good for like a lightweight last ditch kind of thing, but I won't bring it solely as a sleeping pad anymore. But I never brought any breakfast because of that steak last night, but I am pretty hungry, so I'm going to pack up. And get on out of here, but uh, probably take me another hour or so to get get up and doing all that. I was glad to glad to spend the night with my buddy. I don't get to take him on my extended camps and stuff, and that's what I've been doing lately, the far away stuff. So it was good, good time with him. Just shared that steak with him. <laughs> Let him run around and like a wild man. So. I think we both got what we needed out of this little trip. Okay, up and out him. Oh, and there he goes again. He sees something. What is it, bud? Hey? We heard coyotes all night yipping and stuff, and there are a lot here. I've seen, I've seen them here before. I've seen their their poops here before too. So. That's the last thing I want is for them to call him out and how they do that. Where'd he go? I'm trying to have him in the background. There you are. <laughs> That's the last thing I want for uh, is for them to call him out and attack him. Even if he takes him on, I don't want no vet bills and stuff. And I'm sure a couple coyotes could do this guy some damage. So come here, oh, my good boy. Oh, that big boy. Oh, that good boy. Yes, oh, my big boy. I'm gonna have to do a thorough check for ticks. I pulled a couple off myself last night. One off my back that was in, and then I actually the other one was just crawling on my shirt. But yeah, ticks, lots of ticks this year. Gross. I replaced my shoelaces with paracord. They don't like to stay done up as much now.
there's the back goes right down in the back nice and flat and my reflectix will go right behind that it matters how you back pack a backpack it really does okay so then next up my possibles all these little things my grill always goes in between my sit pad or my sitting pad in this case because it fits flat like that Put it upside down and then the, the handle kind of just hangs up the side. That's it for the main bag. Alright. Put a ton of stuff in these side pockets. I did forget to put my tarp in. <laughs> That's what we'll have to do. I think I can just slide it in without having to open it up too much. In that front pocket there. Good to go. I let this fire die out at around three. There's no uh, there's no warmth to it at all. Yeah, zero warmth. Nice. Ciao, buddy. Move. Move, Scout. Watch out, buddy. I know. There you go. Chase this. There you go. Good boy. Alright, guys. That's it. I'm going to head out of here. Get some breakfast. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a quick little overnighter. The pack did fine for what I wanted it for. Uh, like I said, happy to be out here with my buddy even if it's just for a quick overnighter. So, you guys have a good day. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you soon on the next one. Goodbye.